Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Diamond Select Godzilla Classic 1989 Vinyl Figure Bank. And this is one of many in the multitude of banks that Diamond has given us over the years. Most of the banks they do are bust banks, like the Creature from the Black Lagoon I'd reviewed previously. And they have a long line of universal horror banks, they're doing Ninja Turtle bust banks. But the only time I ever remember them really doing a bank to this scale before is when they did the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Fittingly, another giant monster. But when I heard they were doing a full Godzilla figure bank that would stand over a foot tall and clocks in over 17 inches wide or long or however you want to measure it, I was very intrigued to see what Diamond came up with. So let's take a closer look. First off, the pose is a very iconic Godzilla pose. He's got his mouth open in a roar. He's got his arms up, his feet kind of in a fighting stance, and his tail comes off just slightly to the side of him, which I think is kind of a nice pose so you don't have all that tail coming straight off behind him. And yet you still get the full length of the tail situated in the design. And we're going to start with my least favorite part of this figure, the head. And I just really don't think Diamond knocked out this head sculpt too well. It looks a little soft, a little squishy, and the paint on it is a little flat. And I guess I should clarify, the paint on this whole thing is the same charcoal gray, but when you come down to the body, you can see there is a lot of texture that creates actual depth to it because of lighting. On the face, it's missing a lot of that heavy texturing, so the flat gray really looks flat. Also, the vinyl is pretty squishy on this bank, and it looks like he's kind of deformed himself a little bit. His nose looks a little crooked, and his eyes don't seem to sit up quite as high as I think they should. He has yellow eyes with the black pupils in there, but when you turn him at an angle, he kind of looks a little goofy with it. I really think the eyes are one of the weakest points of this sculpt, but the muzzle itself too looks a little goofy. It doesn't seem to flow correctly on his head. It kind of looks boxy and like it just juts out there. See in his mouth, he does have the dual rows of teeth and a tongue in there. The paint is very lacking though. The teeth are all just one color. There's not a whole lot of separation between them. The tongue is the same color as the rest of the mouth, and that kind of bleeds over a little further than it should onto his face. But from the head down, I really like it. I like the sculpt of the neck. It kind of has the nice folds in there like they were on the costume. Very muscular looking upper body like he was in the Heisei era. He's got fairly long arms tipped with grayish claws. I do kind of wish they would have dirtied up the claws a little bit instead of this grayed in like a yellow. Coming down, a lot of great folds in the costume and the skin. Get his big Godzilla feet down there there. Even kind of some detail there on the bottom of the feet. Another area I have issues with is where the legs and the tail meet together and his crotch there. It just looks a little haphazardly placed. I can't even say exactly what's wrong with it, but they all just kind of seem to intersect in an odd way. We spin Godzilla around and we can see all the spines coming down. We have the slot for the coins right here as well. A very large slot. We have all of his fins, which are pretty nicely painted and very well sculpted. They are a little bunched together, and I don't know if that that's a factor of the vinyl being soft once again, that you could probably heat them up and spread them out. Or if it's supposed to be with the pose and that he's doing this twisting motion and they should be kind of clattering together because of the way his skin's pulled. I haven't really been able to ascertain if it's right or not, basically. We can also see there is a seam in the vinyl around these fins. These fins look like they were done as a separate piece at one point and then glued onto the figure. We also can see a seam up where the arms connect to the body on either side side, and then a much less noticeable seam here around the knee where the leg connects in. And then we come down, we have the tail, which another seam, a connecting point here, then another seam about halfway through, but it's nicely detailed, has all the scales on it. And I love the pose at the end of the tail, the way that the tip of it is just kind of dangling and it's being supported a little further back, because that's how they used to really attach the wire that held Godzilla's tail up with a lot of the older movies, so it would kind of have that action going on. Now in my Godzilla bank, I already have some quarters in there saving up for my next Godzilla figure. So if we come down here to the tail, we can rotate it and it will pop right off. And you could access Godzilla's butthole to get 
your coins out. Now I did hear online that several people were having issues putting the tail on. It comes separate from the figure and really the trick is to look at these two main tabs here where it's sunken in in the circle and then to line them up with the two tabs here on the tail. So I take this bottom tab on the tail, the one opposite the side with all the spines, then I line it up with this little indentation here on the right side of the butthole. Once you have those two inserted it's just a simple matter of twisting the tail on and locking it in place. For a scale comparison Comparison. At the time I purchased this figure, he was the largest Godzilla figure in my collection. For a scale comparison, here he is next to my Creature from the Black Lagoon bust bank. My Trend Master Supercharged Godzilla figure, which was my previous record holder for largest Godzilla collectible. And the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1994 is completely dwarfed by him. And overall, I'm a little unsure how to rank this thing. It's a figure bank. It's not articulated. It's really fairly simple but I like it enough that it's gonna get the cult classic status but just barely the head sculpt really almost ruined it for me it really just doesn't look as good as I would like it to it looks better from some angles than others and I think if you went and redid the eyes and gave it a good paint wash you could really knock this thing up a couple notches and make it a very cool figure but it just barely gets that it's not bad enough to damn it but I don't think it's gonna be the centerpiece of many people's Godzilla collections. It's a nice thing to have just to store your money for your next big Godzilla purchase. Now Diamond has an entire line of Godzilla products that they are coming out with this year to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Godzilla. We have this, we have what I believe is the exact same thing basically cut in half to make a bust bank. I believe it's the same version of Godzilla but I may be mistaken. They're also doing a King Ghidorah bust bank that looks freaking awesome. They're doing a Mecha Godzilla bust bottle opener, and they are doing a line of Godzilla Mini Mates, which you know I will be all over. Really excited that Diamond has gotten in on the Godzilla game. I hope it's a successful line for them, because Diamond does pretty good work at pretty affordable prices, so it at least makes it easy to collect. And we've made it, guys. This is the last Giant Monster Monday leading up to the new Godzilla 2014 movie coming out this Friday. I have my tickets for my 7.30 Thursday night showing. Couldn't be more excited about this film. I do have a couple more kaiju-related videos I'm going to try to post up. Maybe I'll just make it a week of Godzilla, depending on how much I can get around to. And definitely in the aftermath of the movie, I'm going to be reviewing some of the new Godzilla products with at least a little bit more insight into the film and into what actually is going on instead of just kind of trying to figure out what things are supposed to be. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, it's been another Outside the Box Reviews, Giant Monster Monday, sayonara.